Hey guys, Webhead Gaming here, and welcome back to Mega Man X3. So now we're back in Crush Craw Fisher Stage to use the fully charged Triad Thunder to obtain the Hawk Armor. The Hawk Armor is probably the best ride armor in the game. Not only is it a long range attacker because of the missile launchers, but it can also glide unlike the others. So that makes it a lot more versatile, it has a lot more mobility, and it's pretty fun to use. I really like this armor. Sadly, I couldn't use it that much because of the, of the way I played X3, but whatever, it's still cool armor to use. In order to get the heart tank in this stage, you have to have a ride armor equipped. That's not the frog armor because the frog armor will not make this jump. But basically, you need to go down two stories, blow up this wall that doesn't look like it can be blow up, blowed up, but whatever, and boom, there's your heart tank. Back in Toxic Sea Horses stage, there is a kangaroo armor we can get. It is the final armor piece that we can get. And we can get it in two ways. We can use the frost shield fully charged to take her a short way up. Or we can use the frog armor and take the current that will lead us to a wall that we can jump up on. The frog armor is by far the most useless right armor in the game. It's very situational because it does did we dick on land and uh, it's great on water, but I find it super awkward to use. I mean, yes, the homing torpedoes are great, but I don't know. Jumping with this name feels very finicky and some of the abilities it can have it just doesn't want to register. I don't know what it is, but I find a frog armor to be very, very useless. So by using one of the two methods, we can get up here. And uh, we have to do a series of jumps without taking damage because if we get hit at all, we'll get knocked back into the water and we'll have to do it all over again. But once you do get up there, boom, there's your ride armor piece. So now we're back in Volt Catfish's stage where I'll show off the final ride armor in the game, the kangaroo armor. Why? Because, well, we need, we need to use a ride armor to get the sub tank here. The kangaroo armor is basically the exact same thing as the chimera armor, except it's got claws for hands, so yeah. And there's our heart... Sorry. Sub tank. <laughs> but luckily, we are now done with the backtracking. We can finally move on to the last stages of the game. Praise the sun! The Doppler stages are probably the hardest series of final stages in the SNES X trilogy. I don't know, there's a lot of things here that can be really annoying. Some of the enemies you'll encounter are pretty goddamn annoying. The contraptions, like this one right here, are very, very deadly. Be very, very careful because those ceiling spikes are instant kill, as always, and you do not want to touch them. <laughs> it's really beneficial to have the leg parts for that section. So now we're at a crusher part, very similar to the one in X2, although it's much easier, and this is the only time this ever happens in the stages. This part is kind of annoying because they place this red guy here, and they also have this wall, this wall enemy, and that can be very annoying. I just bomb rushed through that shit because I just didn't care. So now we're at the first mini boss. And it is incredibly, incredibly weak to the spinning blade, so pull that out. The gimmick of this mini boss is you need to kill it before the ceiling collapses, otherwise you'll get caved in by the spikes and die. Zero will try and s slow it down, but basically you just need to stop this mini boss before the spikes collapse. Luckily, it goes down very, very quickly with the spinning blade. As you saw, it killed it in four hits. Broken as fuck. So, the one thing I neglected to talk about until now are these enhancement chips. You may have noticed these question marks that are in these certain stages. Like when you pop up the stage select and you notice these question marks. Those are the enhancement chips. And they're basically uh, in these very well hidden locations. And if you manage to find one of them, you'll be awarded with an enhancement to your armor. However, they're very, very useless because there is an upgrade we can get in this very stage that nullifies any of all of them. If you do get an enhancement part 
Here's what sucks about it. You can only keep it. You can only keep that one part. You cannot equip the others. And uh, you don't have an option to switch back and forth between what enhancement parts you want. Granted, this was fixed in the enhanced port. But still really stupid. And you also lose out on the super secret if you get any of them. So, yeah. I honestly don't recommend getting any of them. Because they're, again, the super secret here which requires you to have all of the items in the game, as well as be at full health, which is why I wasted that sub-tank right there. It nullifies all of them, because it gives you all of the capabilities at once in this golden armor. And I really don't get that. Like, why even bother with having these four hidden locations when you're going to put this super broken one in the, the final stages? Like... I don't know, it feels like the enhanced chips just feel like a waste of time to design and place, but whatever. So once we go down there, we uh, we are rewarded with the golden armor. The golden armor has all of the capabilities of the enhancement chips. You can double dash, you can take even less damage than before, to my knowledge. Uh, there is this ability to shoot charge shots instantly but it takes up ammo and if you stand still you can heal yourself and it can also fill up sub tanks so really get the golden armor every single time you play x3 it's so much better compared to the enhancement chips that are found in the certain stages so now we are refighting bit however it's very different this time because Bit will transform into this monstrosity known as God Car Machine O Inari. If you spared both Bit and Bite, this boss will show up, but it's a little bit stronger. If you decide to kill one of them but leave the other one alive, then it's even weaker. <laughs> then it's even weaker than as opposed to sparing both of them. Regardless, it's a piss easy boss. It does quite a bit of damage to you because it has these rocket punches that will dish out quite a bit of pain as well as the sword that will send out this crescent beam at you but you can kill it so easily with a ray splasher it's really a non-issue should have no issues with god car machine oinari it's a pretty pretty easy boss especially when you have the golden armor so if you took down both bit and bite in the main stages, you are greeted to this presser machine. And it's definitely a lot more challenging, but not by a whole lot. In order to hit it, you have to to uh, shoot the forehead, which is pretty annoying because it has a pretty small hitbox and and it's being protected by this nose. You have to kill off if you want to make this a lot easier to kill, then kill off the nose, but be careful because if you kill off the nose, then he will fill up the whole arena with acid, which makes dodging his attacks even more difficult to do. He's weak to the Ray Splasher, but I find that to be incredibly inaccurate, especially because he's got that fucking nose. Otherwise, he'll try and grab you, and if he do, he will slam you, and that will do quite a bit of damage. The, the uh, two part will, so, will constantly send out these robots, and junk crates and the robots will shoot at you but they don't do a lot of damage and uh yeah there's not much to really say about this boss it's a bit more challenging than god car machine or inari maybe because it's a lot more annoying to hit but uh it's not too bad once you get used to it really it's just beneficial to use the mid charge shot and the pellets because they're by far the most accurate on this guy and of course, a lot of things can block your more powerful shots. Uh, the hitbox of this thing is pretty... It can be pretty lenient though, so uh, just keep shooting at it, and you'll eventually take it out. Not too difficult. Uh, you do have four sub tanks, so even if you do fuck up, you can always restore your health. And that's that. That's the two bosses that are in this first stage. Overall, they're both not too threatening. You should be able to take you should be able to take care of them both pretty quickly. And yeah. I'll see you guys in the next part when we go to Doppler stage 2.